Hello and welcome to Scale Stuff. In this week's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 135th scale Stuart Honey, made by Academy. But before we get into the kit, it's time for a little bit of history. The Stuart was an American light tank supplied to the British as part of the Lend-Lease program. Used in the opening years of World War II in the deserts of North Africa, the Stuart quickly became very popular with its crews, as the mass production methods used to make this tank made it very reliable. Because of its smooth handling, they were often referred to as honeys by the crews that manned them. However, because of its light gun and armour, the Stuart was quickly outclassed as a fighting vehicle. It did, however, fight to the end of World War II, but was used more for reconnaissance and screening roles. Surprisingly, some Stuarts were still used by armed forces up until the 80s, and they're still registered on the Paraguay Active Forces list to this day. Now, onto the model. This kit was first tooled in 2002, so this version of the model is 20 years old at the time of making this video. New boxed versions of this kit have been released by Italiaria and Airfix since then, but the kit hasn't been retooled by the look of it. A first look at the sprue shows them to be crisp and clean, but I'm not sure on how they will have aged, as this version is an old box version of the kit, so these sprues are only a maximum of 8 years old. On a smell of vision side note, I got this kit second hand and it absolutely stinks of damp, so I hope the decals in this kit are okay. This model comes with both rubber and link by link versions of the tracks. Um, so yeah, I'm going to see how I feel when I get to that stage, as the linking links might prove fiddly. As always, I scanned the internet for pesky rivet counters, and found they had spotted some issues with this kit. Apparently the kit is dimensionally inaccurate, with a smaller turret than should be present, and a turret basket that early versions of Stuarts didn't have in place. It's also a bit short in hull length, but that's by an eighth of an inch, so 3.18 millimeters to be precise. Personally, I'd consider that a nitpick myself, but I guess a line's got to be drawn somewhere. Um, also, this model comes with an interior that is incorrect for this version of the tank. Apparently, it's accurate for an M3A1. Uh, there are a few detailing issues with the interior, a uh, couple of rivets where there shouldn't be any, and areas where there shouldn't be any rivets, and there are some. So, uh, yeah, this kit's definitely not one for the purists. But still, from me, it's a fairly good impression out of the box, and uh, I've wanted to build a British Stuart for a while, and I'm a cheapskate. Overall, the model's a simple and straightforward kit to build. But, as with all kits, there are a few things to watch out for. First things first, this model comes with an interior, so if you intend to display this part of the model, there will be quite a bit of painting to be done as you go. I'm not going to be showing off this kit's interior, but I have given it a basic paint job to better highlight it for this video. The same goes for the interior of the turret. There's quite a bit of detail here, and this bit would be tricky to paint after it's all been put together, so it's another paint-as-you-go part. Also, another area that will need to be painted as you go on this model is the tracks. Some tracks you can muddle through painting the tracks once a kit has been built, but with how the tracks and fenders enclose the tracks on this model, it will be a nightmare to try and paint them later after the whole upper hull has been added. While on the topic of the tracks, when I got to the tracks in this kit, I decided to skip the linking link tracks as, uh, yeah, I tried to build a couple and found them to be a little bit tricky. After doing linking link tracks on the last couple of builds, I fancied a break from track making, so I went with the rubber band sheet tracks in this kit. The rubber tracks included in this kit are the melt the pins to fix type, and I had some trouble fitting them as the pins decided to snap as I put the tracks over the wheels, so be gentle or take one of the wheels off, don't do what I did. Fortunately, the fenders are enclosed enough to just glue them to the top of the fenders and uh, yeah, have the bad seam mostly hidden away. A last bit to watch out for on this model is the main drive wheels. These are best fitted nearly flush with the sides of the tank, so the upper hull will fit on easily after. A dry fit of the upper hull with these unglued in place will make the correct placement much more apparent than just winging it will. And uh, yeah, it could lead to a bit of trouble if you don't do that. Also, this model comes with options to build an American version of the tank, so if you want to build one of them, watch out for the optional steps in the instructions. And uh, if you intend on building the British version of the tank like I did, the smoke grenade launchers will get in the way of the big side turret decals, so personally I chose to leave these bits off so the decals were easier to add on later. One thing I was impressed with by this kit was how fine the attachment points of the parts to the sprues were, as the parts practically fell out of the sprues. It was fantastic and needed very little cleanup. 
figures wise this kit does not come with any figures i think that this is a shame as a nice driver figure would be a good excuse to leave the front hatches open and shaft the interior a bit without having to leave the top off normally i like a figure on my tanks and would add a model to the turret at this point but with the gun and seats and the seat basket in this model there wasn't much room to put a figure in short of cutting the figure's legs off and gluing him to the side of the turret but in doing this it would have interfered with the gun's elevation so i chose to finish this model button down decals wise this model comes with the decals to make four versions of this tank two of which are in a british early war desert scheme one version is an all green american tank and one version is for a captured japanese version of the tank so plenty of color schemes to pick with this model depending on what you fancy making at the time conclusion the academy m3 stewart honey is a nice model but it does have some issues with accuracy which i feel lets an otherwise great kit down sadly there are no other british m3 stewart kits out there though and more accurate stewart kits would need to be modified to make them into a British version. I think Academy missed a ticket with this, as addressing some of the dimensional problems in a budget kit like this would really open sales of this model up to the accuracy hunters out there and uh, completely corner the market, as leaving the errors in is just asking for a competitor to address them and uh, become the go-to kit in class. As far as kits go though, the model is very easy and enjoyable to build. It has good detail on all the surfaces and nice deep panel lines that take detailing very well. The interior and turret detail, while not 100% accurate to the tank's type, would also be a nice budget introduction to this type of scale model kit. I paid £17 for this model second hand and it can be picked up for around £20 to £25 brand new. And to be honest from me, for what you get in the box, even with its inaccuracies, it's still a good value kit for the money. And uh, I'm quite happy with how this model's turned out. Anyway, that's my review of the 135th scale M3 Stuart Honey by Academy. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you find this review helpful if you're thinking of buying one of these kits at home. But until next time, look after yourself and have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>